All right, today we talked about explicit and recursive formulas for arithmetic sequences. So first we're going to talk about explicit formulas. Now in a sequence, remember a sequence is a series of numbers to which there's a pattern. An arithmetic sequence is when you're adding the same number each time to get to the next term. So we can find the first several terms quite easily, but what if you wanted to find, for instance, the 100th term of a sequence? The way things stand now, you would have to write out all 100 terms, and that would take a really long time and really be a pain. So we want to find a better way. We're going to use this sequence right here, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and it's going to go on forever. For what number or where does the sequence start? We're going to say that our initial term, if I can get this to write, our initial term is 3. What's being added each time? That's asking for the common difference. Our common difference this time is 2. So I want to know from my first term, what am I adding to get the second term, the third term, the fourth term, and so on. So let's take a look. From my first to my second term, I added two. From my first to my third term, boy, this is really being slow, I added four. From my first to my fourth term, I added six. For my first to my fifth term, I added eight. Then I added ten. And this pattern continues on forever. Can you see a pattern here? There's a pattern in these numbers as well, right? These are all multiples of what? They're multiples of two. So again, we're going to say that our starting value is 3, okay? What's being added from the first term? It's a repetition of what number or multiples of what number? It's going to be 2, right? So we're going to use that to our advantage. Notice that in my second term, I had to add 1 2. In my third term, I had to add two twos. To my third term, I had, or sorry, fourth term, I had to add three twos. In my fifth term, I had to add four twos. In my sixth term, I had to add five twos. So we're going to use that, okay? We are going to take our 2 and we're going to state how many 2's we had to use for which term. Now remember my term number is n. n is our term number, right? n is our term number. So for my second term, I had 1 multiple of 2. For my third term, I had two twos. Can you see a pattern here? My fourth term, three. My fifth term, four. My sixth term, five. I'm multiplying by two by the term number minus one, or one less than the term number. And what am I adding to that? I'm adding that to the original three that started my sequence. This is actually an equation. I'll show you later how that's in slope-intercept form. But basically, we can say that any term in our sequence is that initial term plus multiples of 2. Let's write this down again. Our explicit formula, then, that helps us find any term in our sequence is our initial term added to the common difference multiplied by one less than the term number I want to find. 
This is a general explicit formula for all arithmetic sequences. So if I want to find the hundredth term of my sequence, all I need to do is put the initial term, my common difference, which was two, and in the parentheses, I'm going to put one less than the term number I want to find. So in this case, two times 99 gives me 198. When I add that to three, I find out that my hundredth term or one hundredth number in this sequence is 201. This way I don't have to write out all hundred numbers before I get to 201. So here I have a different sequence, 4, 10, 16, 22, 28. We're going to write the explicit formula. Again, we write our initial term. We add that to our difference, our common difference, which in this case was 6, multiplied by 1 less than the term number I want to find. So if I want to find a sub 85 or 85th term in my sequence, I'm going to put 4 plus 6 times 84. And we're going to get out our calculator. I'm going to put in 6 times 84. Gives me 504 and I'm going to add 4 to that. Gives me 508. My 85th number in this sequence is 508. One more time. Here I have a new sequence. I need to know my initial term, which is 4, and I need to know my common difference, which in this case is negative 4. So my explicit formula to find any term in my sequence is 4. This time our common difference is negative 4. I could just say minus 4 here multiplied by n minus 1. So if I want to find the 60th term, I have 4 minus 4 times 59. Again, getting out the calculator, 59 times by that negative 4 and adding 4 to that gives me negative 232. My 60th term in that sequence is negative 232. We could write out all 60 numbers if you want to check. Now we're going to have an assignment out of our workbook for this. Um, on pages 194 and 195 there's two boxes. One is practice B and the other is practice C. But before we do that we've got to talk about recursive formulas so that you can know how to finish the problem. We already talked about explicit formula. That's the one we did last time. There's another way to find terms of our sequence called a recursive formula. Here's my explicit formula. This is great for finding any term in my sequence, especially far off terms. A recursive formula is just notation to tell us what's going on in our sequence. There's two parts to a recursive formula. You're going to identify the first term and then look what this second part says. It says to find any term in our sequence a sub n. That's going to be equal to the term before which is a sub n minus 1, right, 1 less than my term number, plus our common difference. So any term added to our common difference gives us the next term in our sequence. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. So here I have a new sequence. My initial term is 7, my common difference is negative 9. 
This is what my explicit formula looks like. For my recursive formula, I say that my initial term is equal to 7 and to find any term in my sequence, I take the term before a n equals a n minus 1 minus 9. This is our common difference. Now keep in mind I already have four terms of my sequence. So if I just need to find the sixth term, which is better to find it recursively by writing out the next two numbers or to find it explicitly by plugging my n's into my formula? Well to find the sixth term, it's probably better just to write out the next two terms. I'm going to have a negative 29 for my fifth term and then a negative 38 for my sixth. That was pretty easy and that's what we call finding it recursively. But to find the 201st term of our sequence, should I write out all 201 numbers? Now this is when explicit comes into play. I want to find the 201st term of my sequence. So I would simply plug in the appropriate numbers. Negative 9 times 200 would give me negative 1800. Add it to 7 gives me negative 1793. To find the 201st term, explicit is way going to be worth our time. But to find a close by term, you want to find it recursively. Let's take a look at these two sequences. The recursive formula for the first sequence, remember I identify the initial term and then I say to find any term in my sequence, I use the term before and add the common difference which is 3. Down here my initial term is 7 and to find any term in my sequence I'm going to take the term before it and add our common difference which again is 3. See how the right part of our recursive formulas are identical? It's going to look like this for any sequence that has a common difference of 3. The only difference is my initial term. The only difference is where our sequence started. They're very close. So here I have a, a sequence 13, 18, 23, 28, 33. This is going to go on forever. And I, if I want to write the recursive formula, what parts need to be included? Yeah, I've got to know the initial term, right? The initial term. And I have to know my common difference. So again, a sub n is equal to the term before it. Add it to my common difference, which is 5 this time. So just a couple of quick examples to solidify what we've been talking about. If I want to find the recursive formula, I simply list my initial term. And I have to put a sub n equals a sub n minus 1. This time we're adding 9. On the second one, my initial term is 12. Then a sub n equals a sub n minus 1. This time we're adding 10. And finally, the last one, a sub 1 would equal negative 13. And a sub n equals a sub n minus 1. This time we're adding 200. Let me know if you still have questions on explicit or recursive formulas. Your assignment, again, is going to be those, those workbook pages, right? 194 to 195, where now you can write in the explicit and recursive formulas. Remember that practice B is on 194 and practice C is on page 195. Good luck. Let me know if you have questions.